Change Your Thinking Change Your Life By Brian Tracy Chapter 7, Putting People First Part C Personal relationships are the fertile soil from which all advancement, all success, all achievement in real life begins. Ben Stein Learn to speak on your feet. If you have any fears about public speaking, you should make a plan, right now, to get over them. Your ability to make a presentation to a small group or to stand up and give a talk or chair a meeting for a larger group can do more to bring you to the attention of people who can help you than almost any other thing you can do. Fortunately, public speaking is a skill you can learn with practice. I have urged people over the years to take a Dale Carnegie course or to join Toastmasters International. They are both open to everyone and available everywhere. When you sign up or join one of these fine organizations, leaders will train you thoroughly in how to speak on your feet. They will teach you how to design a talk with a beginning, a middle, and an end. They will show you how to speak in a variety of different situations. And the better you get at speaking, by the law of attraction, the more you will attract people and opportunities into your life to speak to more and larger groups. Look for ways to put in. Here's something very important that I learned. The great majority of people, being selfish, are always thinking of how they can personally and immediately gain from any interaction that they have with other people. But this is not for you. Instead, your job is to look for ways to put in. Your goal must be to look for ways to contribute. This seems to be the strategy used by many of the top people. Over the years, I have worked with many wealthy men and women. I will never forget a billionaire turning to me at the end of a meeting and privately asking me, is there anything that I can do for you? Later, another man, worth more than $500 million, asked me the same question, is there any way that I can help you? When I went to work for a man worth over $800 million, in our second or third meeting, he asked me if there was anything that he could do in his position to help me in my personal life. By that simple gesture, even though I could think of nothing, he earned my lifelong loyalty. Over the years, I have observed that many of the most powerful men and women, at every level of society, got there by continually looking for ways to help other people. Living the Law Here is one of the greatest discoveries of the ages, the more you give of yourself without expectation of return, the more that will come to you from the most unexpected sources. Most people think that if they do something good or helpful for a person or group, their rewards should come back directly from that person or group. But this is not the way the universe works. When you do something nice for someone else, you activate the law of attraction. Because it is a law, you never have to worry about your reward. As long as you continue to sow goodness, the universe will take care of the reaping. Your good will usually come to you from a completely unexpected source, and at a completely unexpected time. All you have to do is be sure that you are continually putting in. Getting out will take care of itself. The best people. As a professional speaker, I work with groups and associations all over the country. Without fail, the best and most talented people in every association are the ones who attend almost every meeting. The top people are the ones who always take the time and make the sacrifice to be there. They are the ones who always sit on the committees and volunteer to help in any way possible. And I have noticed an interesting phenomenon. Each year, one member of the association will be elected to be the national president. As the president, he or she will have to spend as much as half of his or her time traveling around the country voluntarily, without pay, on association business. You would think that this would really cut into the person's ability to make a living. But it seems that exactly the opposite happens. All the association presidents I've spoken to found that they made more money, did better in their careers, and made more progress in their field in the year that they took off to work for the association than in any other year of their work lives. The more you put in, without expectation of reward, the more you get back from the most unexpected sources and you are in complete control of what you put in. The universe will take care of the rest. Keep a record. Harvey McKay, in his audio program, 
how to build a network of power relationships, says that the most important word not in the dictionary, at that time, is the word Rolodex. He claims that, if your Rolodex is big enough, you are never more than two phone calls away from anyone in the country. Harvey McKay has a Rolodex with more than 4,000 names that he has gathered over the years. He has found that at least one of those people in his Rolodex has direct access to virtually any other person in the country with whom he wants to communicate with, including the President of the United States. Your Mastermind Alliance Napoleon Hill, after decades of studying the richest men in America, concluded that the formation of a mastermind network was an important step to great wealth. It was the creation or joining of a mastermind group that enabled countless men and women to go from poverty and obscurity to success and affluence. The core of your personal network of contacts, even before you begin to go outside to join groups and organizations, should therefore be your mastermind network. This is a small group of four or five people with whom you meet and talk on a regular basis. Getting together regularly, at least once per week or even more often, with other people who think like you do is the key to the success of a mastermind group. Don't worry about being self-serving in these relationships. Include in your mastermind only people you can help, and who can help you.